Okay. As expected, a team from the West Coast is involved, but it isn't the Blazers or Lakers. So for now, Bonzi Wells, Jermaine O'Neal, and Glenn Rice will stay put. And a lot of rumors have been laid to rest because Kukoc was dealt to, of all places, Philadelphia. The Sixers acquired the swingman in a three-team deal, although he missed 24 games this season. Kukoc is averaging 18 points, five rebounds, and five assists a night. The steal of the, the trade could be for Golden State. They acquired Larry Hughes, who became the odd man out in Philly with Allen Iverson's shift to two guard. Here's a strange twist. One of the guys Bulls fans have grown to truly hate is now one of their own. Former Nick and now former Warrior John Starks is the final component in the three-way trade. So here's the official breakdown. Kukoc goes to Philly because Jerry Krause didn't want him to land in L.A. and possibly help Bill Jackson. And since Portland wouldn't throw in Bonzi Wells in the deal, Krause went elsewhere. Philly sends the 21-year-old Hughes to the Bay Area along with Billy Owens, who returns to Golden State for a second stint. And Starks lands in Chicago along with Bruce Bowen and a number one pick. And by the way, I didn't know Jerry Krause had feelings. A number of years ago, I had a trade uh, a player that I thought was a great player and a tremendous friend and uh, I was in tears when we traded Charles Oakley. Uh, I knew today, or if the day ever came, uh, when we had to move Tony on, uh, that it would be worse, and it was. Right now, if they can help us win and win and bring this franchise back to respectability and restore the pride and passion I once had for Philly basketball, that's what the goal here is. We want to win. Oh, boy. Okay, so Pat Croce really wants to win, and Jerry Krause showing That's emotion. Geez. Marcus Johnson joins us now. Marcus, got to ask you a question. Did Philly mortgage the future because they give away a guy, Larry Hughes, who has been brilliant at times, but he just couldn't coexist with the answer? And, and I think Larry Brown also had a problem with Larry Hughes, and you know that's one of the things about this deal. Will Larry Brown be there, and how long will he be there? Mm -hmm. Will they be a team uh, that could use the Larry Hughes long after Larry Brown is gone? But uh, I really like Larry Hughes. He's a terrific young player. Uh, didn't have a particularly good dunk contest over the weekend, but he can get up, he can rise, he can shoot the ball from the outside. And then Tony Kukoc, this gives Philadelphia a fifth player, 6'9 or better. They've got length on this basketball team. They've got flexibility. He can play inside, he can play outside. He's a, a good three-point shooter, even though he hadn't shown at this season shooting about 23 percent but he gives them that small four you look at lynch you look at mckee two guys that use it small four they're averaging about 18 points combined that's what tony gives them by himself and then also he can play with the score he played with mj for a number of years so he'll find his shots uh, uh the ones that Al allen iverson turns down mm -hmm. he'll be there to find those shots in the, within their offense all right how good is this john starks a chicago <laughs> bull i mean it doesn't even make any sense yeah and i'm wondering you know i know john starks is going to say all the right things about the Chicago organization being a great organization and all that, right. but you have to wonder deep down inside, does he really want to be a bull? He had the highlight dunk of the millennium <laughs> with that dunk over Horace Grant and uh, packs in, and then Michael Jordan kind of pulls his hand back. No, it wasn't on me. I pulled my <laughs> hand back, so I'm not claiming that. But, uh, it, you know, I'm really wondering how John Starks is feeling inside. He's got to have some mixed emotions because of all those heated battles that he's had for so many years against Chicago. Yeah, Krause isn't the only one crying right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Mark. Thanks. Grant so gives it back to Maloney. They wanted him to shoot the three. Now the shot clock is down to ten. Grant picks it out. Starks will take the three and hit a big three. Seventeen for Starks. 82-78. The Grizz have the lead over the Bulls here in the United Center. Stands right now for the Bulls. And Starks catch and shoot. He does it so well. Look at that. He knocks it three down. He gets 17 points. Elton Brand kicks it out of the out of the double team. Oh boy. The Bulls like to get to the free throw line, and ten times in this quarter, they've missed free throws. Sixteen of twenty-eight the Bulls are from the free throw line. Fourteen point eight seconds left. They missed what one free throw in the first half. Five to eighty-one over the Bulls. Breaks a two-game winning streak by the Bulls. One guy that is back for the Bulls, Fred Hoiberg, was just activated, so he's here, as is John Starks. Starks is here and ready to play for the Chicago Bulls against the Pacers. And Johnny and I will be back with more right after these. Tim Floyd up talking is John Starks. You can guess with all the boos. Randy Brown says it yeah. should have been a double foul. And I agree with Randy because that was one that both guys were fighting on the way up. But Starks comes in. I asked John before the game how his back felt. 
John said his back was well, better. Look at this, this matchup. Oh, Starks I like and, this. And Miller. I like this matchup. Miller starts to penetrate on top. Mark Jackson missed one three already. Made that, so he's one of two or three. Long range. And we do have one trade in the NBA. I'll tell you about it in a second. It is not what you'd call a blockbuster deal. Percy Hawkins. What it does, too, is it, it gets uh, maybe into the, the legs of this team. This team played in Detroit last night. They had to come back home, and their starters were in there till the end. John Starks with a little jumper. From the right side, Starks makes it 19-15. Bulls with the lead. Three forty-five left in the first. Now, Elton Brand starts out very high. Bulls will use him to reverse. He'll go down to set a screen for Starks. Starks pops off. He'll take the three, top of the circle. Yes, and sir. it is good. He gets the three. You know, that's what I like. He comes off, and he's looking. He's very aggressive. He'll take that shot. Sometimes the younger players will look, and they're caught in that nowhere zone. Tom, they don't know whether to dribble it or take the shot. Catch and shoot, as the coaches like to call it. And there's Miller. Comes around the screen, penetrates, fadeaway jumper. Reggie Miller missed that. Dickie Simpkins right there for the rebound. Boy, I love the energy this team is showing right now. Dale and a Davis. foul, yep. Welcome back to Indiana. Bulls lead at 24-17. And, John, the three-point shot has been kind to the Bulls so far. Yeah, watch Starks. He catches and shoots as soon as he sees a little daylight, and, uh, and I like that. He does a good job of it. Bulls 11 of 16 from the field, nine rebounds, 16 points in the paint. Back, uh, the Indiana Pacers had had a big lead of 12 points as he starts pulls up and has he got it? Yes, he does a three two. From the right a two. He held up. Uh, oh, I thought he was there. Okay. Yeah, I did too. Looks like held a three. Up. How about this? A few boos from the Indiana crowd. We haven't heard that. Rose comes around the screen, gives a turnover out of that. Davis kicks it to Reggie Miller. Baseline jumper. Reggie Miller is off and Simpkins right there. Good decision by Dick. He says, all right. Now Starks fakes the three. Inside for Brand. Davis over to double team. Simpkins went to the basket. Hawkins finds him out to our test. Starks fakes the three. Takes the baseline jumper. It's on the way. And good. good job. John Starks with nine now. And we've got a one-point game with a minute left here in the first half. sets the screen down low he's got it with Hawkins on him on top Rick Smith's a, Smith's a very good free throw shooter oh. nice job nice job you knew just what you were trying to do too <laughs> okay Starks pushes it up brand up high for the screen roll Davis comes over to double team Stark spin move goes right down the lane. Oh, terrific pass. Oh. Brand just couldn't put it in. Oh, now Stark takes it away. A and three. he'll put up a three left side. Yes. Jocks. Oh, a two. A long deuce oh, for Stark. What a terrific play. Steals it from Rick Smith and gets two points out of that. And we've got a one-point game. And a pretty good first half, John, by the Chicago Bulls. Make it 45 to 44. A great first quarter. But again, the Indiana Pacers have the lead by one. Bulls started out shooting 70% in the first quarter, and the Bulls come right back. A 23 to 11 Indiana run, but again, at halftime, a one-point game. 